we can start yeah hi uh, welcome to the second uh, panel discussion uh, of the undergraduate dissertation uh, research symposium at uh, c um the second panel will be uh, uh, comprised of uh, kalpita salvi uh, aditya verma and tanvi sabla um kalpita will be uh, presenting her, her work titled switched city architecture of mediatized sensory hardware extensions aditya verma uh, will be presenting uh, his thesis titled devising home and uh, tanvi savla will be presenting her thesis titled uh, spatiality of publicness and new media um the panelists are the same as in the morning i'm assuming uh, if i'm not wrong um and and i will let uh, kalpita to kind of take over and start uh, the presentation kalpita over to you just a second Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. Can you okay. go to the presentation mode? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the title of this thesis is "Switch to Be." Over years, the devices with the suffix "wear" have become an integral part of our everyday tasks. Kelly Easterling, in her research, uses "wear" as a modifier, modifier of intelligence, to suggest an activation to engage culture. Today, mediatized extensions are enhancing or diminishing our senses to connect to different spatial categories and create various sensoriums around us. The question this thesis asks is: How do the extension to human senses through various everyday hardware reshape the idea of space and create certain emotions environment for the human body? It aims to explore uh, kinds of environment create. created by sensory hardware and its effects on the experience of the space uh, mediatized hardware emphasizes human sensoriums which form a certain understanding of the space in which a body performs its daily tasks the idea of media and medium is explored by marshall mcluhan he argues that rather than the content the medium in which it is delivered is a message that is perceived uh so methodology So the thesis identifies five operative concepts in reading these media spaces by the fieldwork in the suburb neighborhood of Gorikhau in Mumbai. Formulating these uh, formulation on of these uh, operative concepts, there are five narratives that are written, which uh, to understand the amplified sensoriums. And these narratives use a graphic storyboard to create a spatial temporal experience. So these are the operative concepts. These are the five operative concepts which I'll be explaining. And out of the two, out of the field works, I will be explaining the two episodes which I'm calling as the field work. So the first uh, operative concept is called the heterotopia of the frame. Uh, Michel Foucault sets the concept of heterotopia in his essay "The Other Spaces." He introduces heterotopias as the other spaces which disrupt the normal and structures. structural structural pattern of everyday by pushing away the boundaries of social the mediatized extensions have their own physical limitations the spaces around us are molding themselves according to these physical boundaries creating possibilities uh, for the formation of the other spaces termed as heterotopias so the first episode is called editors of everyday so the story is located in one of the typical apartments of goregao In the calm afternoon, Benita, the daughter of the family, is getting ready to go out with her friends while her mother, uh, Aradna, is watching her daily daily afternoon show. Benita Benita is running from here to there to find her things, but her oncoming notifications is breaking her motion continuously. Why I can't find anything in this house? Why are you rushing? If, uh, why are you rushing if you have everything in plan? And can you please stop moving in front of my TV? As Benita gets ready, Aradna takes various pictures of her daughter and uploads it online. While putting on shoes, Benita looks at her mother, who sat, who has a satisfied smile on her face. Benita says goodbye, but there is no response from the other side. Guess I'll get a bonus today. As soon as Benita reaches reaches the restaurant, she sits at the card table, which is picture perfect for today's environment. Today, all her friends are wearing the best contrast to this background they sit. As the As the food arrives, the social media feeds on it. 
after a while vanita selects people or chooses people whom she wants to take pictures with after all they are her people she has hired them the perfect daughter of aradhna makes her social persona by hiring people according to their characteristics as vanita reaches home she hugs her mother and talks about her experience at the restaurant after an hour or so she gets ready to leave i guess it's time aradhna the session is over and vikram will be here at any time you know and he doesn't like this transfer my payment as i sent the other shots and please write a nice review the second uh, operative concept is city as a panopticon as the eyes of the streets are blurred by the uh, mediatized layer the surveillance systems are assuring one security the systems within which the information of who's watching when is watching is closed gives the idea of the concept of panopticon transforming urban cities into the idle prison the second story is located in one of the the second story is called the no one surprise and it's a uh, it's a uh, sorry and it's located in one of the gated communities of goreka where an elderly couple couple is discussing about their neighborhood over a cup of tea uh yeah i'll just go to the episode i think this requires more cinnamon i tried mr sharma's tea while last month's kitty party it was quite strong and nice i'll try next time maybe mr sharma started a new business Rebecca told me it's quite big and profitable, but must be very legal since it's not caught yet. Maybe, but I don't understand these calculations yet. How can you predict something just by calculating certain things about people? It might be true, two, three, true things though. You never know the results. Last night, Mrs. Chaudhary was taken for the investigation. What? What happened? She's a fine lady. I used to like her, and her daughter is also very pretty and clever. That's the problem. In the morning, Rebecca told me that her daughter wasn't real at all. Seriously, but hiring people is not illegal. Then what happened? They say she had eighty-nine percent possibility of committing grade A crime. It's absurd. I really don't get it. The, I really don't get the crime division of crime. Did you check her prison file? No, and I don't even want to. Yeah, the idea. Uh. The idea of blurred privacy only makes me sick. I guess Mr. Sharma does something related to ex- exporting gold, which seems very valuable to me. Is there anything you want from them? No, I'm just trying. To, I'm not trying to do something big. It's a small pa- plan, and also I have I have everything under control. It can be misunderstood by people, you know, and even the headquarters. Yeah, but it's a small plan for his birthday, and it's coming next week. uh yeah that's nice but i don't want to hear anything now i arranged it properly and I, everyone will be happy okay will you eat chapatis instead i'm just tired to make uh tired to make rice for tonight yes that will do uh suddenly a ring suddenly their doorbell rings yes what's the hello we are from the personal affairs headquarters for the past 5 years we have calculated suspicious activities in this particular apartment i am the head of department from C- g16 we have to arrest mr sharma for 95% possibilities of committing a grade c crime the third uh, operative concept is uh, the space calculator the gap between desires and reality is bridged by various moment calculator devices such devices break down your desire desires into smaller parts of sp- space and time it creates and provides a structured recipe for an individual manufacturing such re- routines changes the authoritarian power and gives feeling of satisfaction while performing in such spaces the fourth one is hallucinating neighbor moving from one category to another has become a daily and unconscious phenomenon of our lives one shifts continuously between various non visible spaces within few seconds these shifts are their spaces of relief comfort and desire the digital smell analyzing four operative concepts explained about this thesis tries to understand a hypothetical situation where another sense of human body is taken over by a mediatized hardware in 2013 even though google introduced google knows as a joke here it is considered as a possibility to understand the amplified sensory today there are experiments going on to take the importance of smell and how it becomes in different department to enhance someone's smell uh, someone someone's uh, one smell sense uh the conclusion the speciality can be 
and he thought using meditized hardware to respond to extended sensoriums rather than mapping one's action for security these sensoriums can be used to watch out for one another one another the trigger to enter various categories can become cities to inhabit and rather than going to the dystopian or a utopian future the specialities can be modified to respond accordingly yeah uh, so thanks kalpita um, can i request aditya to go next Aditya, you are on mute. Yeah. Hello, I'm Aditya, and I'll be presenting my work, "Devising Home." Presently, homes cannot be imagined without the technologies they are embedded with. This research aims to understand the revised and evolving semantics of our everyday environments seen through the interventions of new technology. The objective of this research is to develop an understanding. to be able to reconstruct a responsible relationship between the architecture of an apartment with the everyday life of individuals with respect to the devices around which everyday modern social life unfolds using this research i will look at uh, apartments or uh, apartment houses of mumbai over the last 90 years there are two aspects to this study study the first aspect is to look at how the uh, how the physical form of the layout has changed because of the upgradation of the technology and the second aspect is to look at changes in the sociality of life lived in these apartment the coming of new technologies for each unit of the study the following things will be analyzed and mapped what are the domesticities both imagined and emerging how technological transformations impacted the way we live organize and go about our daily life and social practices Funct functional dis uh, differentiation to understand how life is getting consolidated in the planned forms of an apartment or into various compartments technological de determinism understanding the logics behind placing devices in a particular manner as well as the resultant life which is formed around these devices and the last is systemic thinking apartments are uh, inscribed within various systems that are laid out in a particular manner to support the appliances how one influences the other and how it affects the overall planning of the and structuring of spaces in in an apartment and the uh, com the whole complex field work i'll be going decade wise starting from 1930s this house had this house had no bedroom it was one room kitchen apartment which was converted into a one bhk apartment the kitchen was converted into a bedroom by accommodating the kitchen area in the cooking area into the utility space while washing areas remained unchanged various activities like having meals food preparation doing any other work or household chores were thought of in parallel to watching television television was hence positioned in the best manner to provide and facilitate as many overlaps as possible at the same time creating blind spot where people who didn't wish to watch television can sit in a single room various activities got planned and segregated by merely articulating the positions of the device and furniture making the living room the most active and conducive space of the house for all kinds of activities existing existing folds in in the internal walls were utilized for accommodating all the unplanned appliances This is a one BHK apartment where only radio was considered while the apartment was being planned. In order to functionally differentiate the rooms, a new type of interior space is introduced: corridor, dedicated to circulation. Not only it provided the rooms with independent access, but also accommodated the spillover activities from each of the room. This way of planning uh, attempts to consolidate the consolidate the functions and activities into either of the rooms. The living room is. thus reduced to a shared social space for collective activity like to watch to eat to celebrate and as a reception room for guests etc and the bedroom here emerged as a relatively more private part of the house a space to avoid all these activities for resting and working this is a 1 bhk apartment with all three rooms of approximately the same size all having independent access the spillover that the earlier corridor was able to accommodate is no longer is no longer possible ending up consolidating 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 all the activities in either of the rooms the kitchen was significantly renovated and reorganized 
to accommodate uh, all the uh, unplanned appliances like uh, like washing machine refrigerator television uh, sorry not television microwave and dishwasher etc with the coming of these devices the frequency of cooking reduced reheating food became quicker and easier it changed the way people planned their meals food preparation other household chores and work having liberties provided by these appliances home run businesses and a like practice started to emerge while accommodating uh, these new factors into the domestic space various activities got reconstituted the bedroom here functions very differently from what it was previously planned for as a private and intimate space of the house air condition or air conditioner also became instrumental in replace, uh, reducing the occupancy of the house into a single room also the apartment starts to uh, apartment complex starts to fold hiding all the services from the face of the building this is a 2 bhk apartment the house is planned for radio and telephone hence uh, hence to accommodate all the unplanned appliances not only the walls but uh, but the furniture all furniture are placed in specific ways to create folds in which uh, which would subsume the appliances unplanned appliances it was the television that brought every member of the household together and to some extent started to uh, regulate the social interaction within the household for most part of the day t- television was kept switched on even when my mom is talking on the phone or cooking in the kitchen because we are accustomed to that ambience or background noise which was generated by the television or the dvd player these to some extent also rendered the utility of living room as a place to watch and to have meals much more confined and restrictive as compared to other older homes this is a 1 bhk apartment which was retrofitted the second bedroom was added in the year 2000 with an attached washroom the arrangement of room is done in a linear manner suggesting the bedroom as a private and the intimate part of the house as the act of watching television became personalized personalized act due to diversification of diversification in choices provided by uh, provided by various streaming services and private channels collective activities like having meals started to disperse into the private room now with everyone in their house having his or her personal device people have started consolidating consolidating their everyday activity activities into a single room the publicness of the living room started to dissolve air conditioner further started to seal off the rooms by having to keep the door shut to contain the conditioned air the living room is more like my brother's private room it also functions as a temporary gathering space the kind of furniture that is used also make sure that it can be used as a public space of the house the product the production of flexible arrangement is increasingly seen in terms of amalgamating multifunction design principles aimed towards addressing the varied configuration of family work living and leisure in these apartments multifunction multifunctional furnitures are mobilized towards making room more versatile hospitable spaces that could serve diverse purposes as required what remains in contention is the ex- extent to which this new potential for user configuration will enable the inhabitants to intervene in these apartment as per the emerging domesticity this is a 2 bhk apartment where television refrigerator and telephone were considered while the apartment was planned walls of the house fold precisely in specific manner these articulations become suggestive as to where any particular device is to be planned and subsequently how the furniture is to be arranged appliances like laptops smartphones tablets coupled with internet services offered a house the potential to be productive as the virtual virtual as the virtual workspaces uh, started to emerge earlier also the house the house was productive but in a different manner now, now with new affiliations and new networks to new networks since the wifi connection was provided in the bedroom the utility of bedroom for sleeping gets swapped into the living room so whenever i have to work that whenever i have to work overnight everyone else sleeps in the living room while i work in the bedroom the low one the 1990 it's a 2 bh 1 bhk apartment where only television where only television refrigerator telephones were considered while the apartment was planned all other appliances were not yet introduced or were a common household commodity the li- the living room as per the desired position of the television gets divided into two zones one of which becomes becomes a uh, becomes a uh, dining zone and 
and the other be zone becomes a area for watching television or hosting guests etc these articulation rendered the utility of living room as merely as a place to watch television or or to have meals appliances become instrumental in shaping habits routines practices occupancy and social interaction within the domestic space this is a 2 bhk apartment where all the appliances were considered and uh, as planned, and planned for as per general usage appliances start getting consolidated into the various compartment as per the utility based on the generalized logic appropriate articulations were made much of my domesticity in an apartment remains predecided and restricted as anticipated and generalized by the planner life started getting consolidated in these planned form the advent of technological objects within the domestic space has a huge impact on how we live organize work and go about our daily life the notion of public nav get dissolved with diversification in choices routine schedule which renders the functionality and the utility of living room as a public part of the home almost redundant houses have started to lend themselves to all different kinds of possibilities and new kinds of practices have started to emerge in these domestic space house lo- house layouts are today conceived as technology conducive and planned to accommodate the devices around with the everyday modern social life unfold current apartments are targeted at lifestyle which happens around appliances for residents presumably sharing the same discourse to a life, daily life as conventionally implied however the tra- however the traditional meaning and function associated with the division of the apartment no longer reflect the activities that they hold the current form of the apartment fails to respond to the emerging tendencies of an habitation redundancies and opportunities created due to these technological transformation houses have started to accommodate various other functionalities the existing model of an apartment in the context becomes too rigid and restrictive to adapt to the changing forms of life and practices taking into consideration all the tendencies which are getting instilled due to new technologies which in the present time is formulated to a very different idea of home how apartment architecture can be readdressed through a renewed understanding of renewed understanding and hence what could be the new form of of, of an apartment yeah yeah thanks thanks aditya uh, tanvi can you go next make sure you unmute yourself and aditya yeah. you mute yourself thanks you all can hear me right yes can you share your screen yes i'm sure yeah yeah partiality of publicness and new media in our everyday life public plays an important role from the road we walk on to the parks we visit everything comes under the concept of public space we see new public spaces emerging over the period of time such as malls parks shopping centers food hubs and so on for people to use and occupy in varied forms these spaces are usually built with the perspective of becoming a means of leisure people are allowed to use these without any monetary investments or sometimes with a very low maintenance fee but these new public spaces are very restrictive to the type of users only specific forms of people become active users of these spaces what is this public that is imagined to use this new program typologies in the open environment also the idea of public produces both the interventions of anti public and the formation of new public and that is where architecture becomes instrumental there is a loss of experience due to loss of the materiality that has occurred on account of access usage of internet driven media the project intends to understand these changes in experiences and routines with the coming up of new media okay, so what is it that i sought to do there is an attempt to understand what public space means and what is the sense of it when it gets intensely dominated by new media these questions can be further divided as what does the term public mean with respect to public spaces and how has new media influenced our routines and how has this influence changed the spatiality of publicness public spaces thus the question of what happens to life routines physical experiences transactions community formation relationships etc when spatiality of public space transforms on account of new media becomes a research interrogation a personal experience of instances like not allowing the access to a free entry public space due to the appearance of a person some places like streets which are too claimed and declared as no hawking zones and sometimes personally being so engrossed in social media while i outside that there has been a complete repurpose of the use of public space it made me think about it thus the question of what is publicness of public spaces 
Three years ago, a little impoverished girl, aged seven to eight years, snatched away a cone of ice cream from my hand outside a mall in Kandavli. On inquiring about the reason for the act, she mentioned she wanted to taste it. Achhi dikhti hai. Bahut baar dekha hai sabke haath mein the ice cream. She was accompanied by her younger brother, who also wanted the ice cream. I requested them to accompany me back inside the mall so that I can buy them one more. She replies me saying, "Titi, aap hi jaake leke aao. Ham wahan andar nahi aa sakte. Humko bhaga dete hai." Pointing at the security guards. It is not that the mall has an entry charge that one cannot afford, but just the clothing of children made it inaccessible for them. The adversities of social construct makes an open to all place closed for some. Thesis aims to look at the concept of public and public spaces, new media, and publicness of media. The study aims to understand in detail the questions like, what is public? What is the speciality of publicness? What are public spaces, and what defines it to be public? How has new media influenced our routines, and hence the speciality of publicness? What is the role of new media during the times of COVID-19 pandemic? Units such as a node, a market, a beach are chosen to study and observe. These forms of public spaces allowed for three different experiences of urban spaces. These spaces were chosen on basis of difference in scale, accessibility, and occupancy. Methods of detailed interviews, observation of the site, and observation of movement have been used to study and analyze the units. Form of representation will be a collage of associated images with short annotations. Terms such as peripheral vision and involuntary senses become the driving force in the making of the representations. Due to these, we would experience anxiety. The senses are quite disoriented, and the surroundings are blurred. Thus, a clear understanding may not be developed, and hence generating a stimulus in our minds. We experience a kind of blurred vision of our surroundings, which is less accurate while looking at our screens. This is a this kind of vision is illusionary, as well as only a representation of the actual experience. There exists a divergence from the reality in noticeable ways when we perceive things with a peripheral vision. Just like Maria Angel in her essays, "Seeing Things: Image and Effect," says that virtual experience is the capacity of human body rather than a trait of media. The collage will include parts of images of activities happening in a mediatized urban public space along with a layer of experience of screen thus layering the drawing with real images of the samples of the study and attempt, attempting to bring in simultaneity that we experience in the real and virtual world there is a bubble of algorithms that surround us wherever we go whatever we do a node I can hear the constant sound of temple bells and smell incense sticks. Let me play one match of Ludo. The cow shed next to it allows me to see constant movement of cows in and out. People come to buy milk and feed the cow tied near the temple. Oh look, my photo has been liked by five thirty people. This lady is giving me a gaze. I will look at my phone to ignore the eye contact. Oh, that's a sad news. Times of India notification. That car is going at a very high speed. Will it crash? Five new notifications. Hello, doggo. Nice to see you. Yes, I like this song from Kabir Cafe. There are so many vehicles parked here. Why did they ban Chinese apps? I want to know it. Milk truck is here. Hello. That lady has been waiting for an auto since long. Yes, this Photoshop hack is useful. Does that old lady need help? Moving on to the next uh, intervention, uh, a market. Oh, I will buy tomatoes from here. It looks fresh. Let me check the check the rates on Amazon groceries first. So much crowd out here. Oh, a new follow request on Instagram. Muli lelo bees ka aada, dudi pandra ke. Arey bhaiya, thik se bhaa laga. Thirty to seventy percent off on Puma. I'll check the deals as soon as I reach home. Banana wafers twenty rupees. Soya six thirty five rupees. Turn left after four hundred meters. I should help that lady cross the road. The vehicles are quite at speed. Oh, that's a great deal. These evenings are these evening hours make this road unbreathable. Everyone comes out at the same time. Alexa, what's on my list? Apple ka kya bhaga hai, bhaiya? Aur ye santra? Today I have so many emails to check. I like the smell of this henna. I will come within a week to apply Mandy. Oh, have you watched this new music video? That person has a such a well arranged story.
Moving on to the third one, a beat. Pass the ball here. Hey, hey, hey. Kulfi le lo kulfi. Ten rupees ka kulfi. Oh, what a beautiful sunset. I will click a picture and upload a story. Channel sore karam. New update available. Look how beautiful that sand castle has been made by that child. One new message. Kutta and beach isn't it a perfect combination along with some gola. Mintra price drop alert. Nariyal pani tis ka ek asi ka tin. Oh, it's a match. Aao aao pav bhaji biryani yahan se yahan pe Balaji mein se khao garma garam. Items in your cart have dropped prices. Check out now to avail deals. How joyful the beach side walks are. Your friend posted a story a while ago. Mama, I want to sit in that boat. Why is there no network here? ये बच्चों को मजा ही आ जाता है रेती में खेलने एंटर पास कोड दीदी बुड्ढी के बाल खाने हैं आई नीड टू सेंड अ स्नैप माई स्ट्रीट इट्स अ हाई टाइड नाउ लेट्स गो टू वर्ड्स वॉटर टू कंक्लूड न्यू मीडिया हैज मेड द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ पब्लिक स्पेस साइमिलटेनियस वी आर इन फिजिकल स्पेस बट वी ऑल्सो इन हैबिट अ वर्चुअल स्पेस साइमिलटेनियसली द साइमिलटेनिटी दैट वी एक्सपीरियंस डी मटेरियलाइज द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर स्पेस The closed boundaries of a public space have thus become an infinite canvas to be explored. Neither the public space nor its edges are fixed. The ideas of community at the node, transactions in the market, and leisure at the beach, that are all public spaces, have been directed by these algorithm-based devices. There is a loss. There is a constant reproduction of the experiences when one person enjoys a place physically and shares it to the other through these devices. when multiple people can virtually be there at the same time the need and form of physical space diminishes thus this is the new drawing all about forces and morphs that is formed the over influence of new media is slowly disintegrating the experience and the need of existence of a particular space for a specific purpose any space can turn into anything and the function of space becomes dynamic and independent of the form these spaces are ever changing in terms of use which makes it dematerialized the multiplicity of these spaces is ever transforming with respect to the type of users at different times of day there has been an intense repurposing of these public spaces there has been an intense amalgamation and uh, of algorithms with a cogitation that generates anxieties that direct directs our mind and actions through thought processes thus our routines have been influenced by these technologies in terms of experiences and perceptions we perceive a space as we see it through our screen and not by its actual materiality texture smell and other perceptions that makes it unique in nature the experiences are thus like a pixel hence the digital appears to have mixed up with the physical to create the public space as against earlier it was only the physical which created the public space therefore it can be used in places with less physical possibilities to increase the digital possibility for creating the public space places with dense habitations with no possibility of having large public spaces smaller digital hubs can thus be incorporated to experience the public space thank you thanks then we uh, thanks all the three of you uh, can i invite the respondents to kind of maybe uh, give their comments and and their questions um, in the meanwhile uh, just quickly uh, maybe give three uh, quick comments on the on the three works that were presented um, just one point to comments i think one uh, interesting thing about the kalpita's presentation was um, you know there was a sense of always seeing from the outside uh, in uh, and 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 that, that kind of uh, that that kind of gaze kind of a quality kind of you know uh, from your work uh, also has a very speculative uh, you know sense to it which is which is quite interesting uh, while aditya's presentation kind of you know um, so we was looking at things from inside out uh, carefully kind of you know uh, picking out all the technological you know uh, devices or tools that get added to the apartment year decade after decade and, and slowly reconfiguring it um, and i think in tanvi's case what is interesting is is to kind of um, is is the immersion in in the technological you know ether that that surrounds us but also the the immersion in the in the in the uh in the in the sensual qualities of everything that surrounds us and technological kind of new media is kind of adding another 
you know layer of that that ethereal quality this to this thing uh, so with that i'll invite maybe uh, maybe prasad to go this time first and then uh, we'll go in the reverse order hi uh, uh so one uh, uh thanks uh, all three of you uh, for the presentation uh, i'm actually still trying to kind of comprehend uh, you know the three presentations so uh, i'll try and respond uh, uh, uh there was uh, three interesting uh, in the sense of uh, you know trying to uh understand how uh you know ideas of space are primarily changing with uh both media and uh technology uh over the past few decades actually uh but i, I kind of feel uh that uh you know this uh, the idea of technology and media right and what it involves is not necessarily about phones and television and radios and things like that right uh, like uh, in, in the sense that i feel uh, you know uh, like if you look at the apartment type uh, and there's that work by nikhil rao right where he talks about the toilet also as a technological innovation right that kind of comes up uh, in the 30s and 40s uh be certain understandings of class and caste right so uh, in the sense that uh, you know toilet is also as much a technology uh, right as much as you know televisions and radios and things like that right uh, which are uh, sort of embedded in certain kind of uh, social relationships right now uh, what was interesting to me uh, is where uh, these different kind of technological mediums start interacting with each other right like where uh, as aditya's uh, study kind of shows where uh, you know the medium of uh, an apartment house uh, starts as well as you know the idea of what a family is uh, starts kind of shifting with the coming in of uh, specific kind of technology right uh so it, you know it, it's more uh i i felt that it was interesting to look at not necessarily as technology and media something that is separate you know that is suddenly come in and kind of starting to change space uh but if we start looking at uh, how different kinds of technology media interact with each other and i think that is also what all the three presentations are asking uh where uh, you know what is how does one uh, move across say the digitized uh, technological medium and the beach also as a certain kind of an architectural uh, spatial medium right uh, you know how do you, how does one move how where do they interact right uh, what does it allow for what does it disallow for in terms of what is a public space right uh what does it do in terms of an apartment building uh or what does it uh do in put in a particular kind of an area in terms of neighborhood when you're starting to look at it in terms of uh, you know the cctv camera and uh, uh in terms of uh the different kinds of uh, technological mediums through which you're sort of moving right uh so i felt uh uh in some sense that you know what it takes uh, all three of it you know like uh, i felt it a little to be abstract uh, in the sense of while you specify what technological medium is uh, like you know television radio washing machine uh, you know phones apps everything the technological medium of architecture you know it remains the same right uh you don't necessarily look at the beach also as a as a spatial medium right you don't look at the apartment also as being framed by different kinds of technological mediums which are very social in a, in a sense of and how do those interact in some sense right what does it allow for what does it disallow for 
uh, because I, in, uh, and this is just to go a little deep, bit deeper in the sense of the idea of techne is not necessarily technology in the sense of you know software and hardware, uh, but software is also social relationships, right? Uh, and that is what you know the Heidegger's whole idea of techne and then power kind of uh, comes in is that where do they interact in some ways? And it's there in all the three works. Uh, but uh, I felt that it's not, uh, I, I, you know, the one in the apartment, I kind of understand where it's going, you know, in the sense of uh, how technology is starting to change, you know, the social technique, you know, social relations, because technology is largely relationships, right? Uh, so how that is changing, but in the other two hours, uh, where these social relationships are going, because they've written in a way, uh, uh, from uh, like, uh, you know, the one by Tani is written from a very in individual experience sort of perspective, but how does it change relationships, right? Uh, and that is something that uh, I was looking for. Uh, okay, I'll stop here. I'm still trying to kind of make sense of the three projects. So there's a very uh, cursory kind of remarks. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Prasad. Uh, maybe I'll invite uh, Vishwanath to kind of go next and then serve over. Okay. Yeah, sure. So, uh, I, I I would like to begin by taking from what I think Prasad was talking of earlier that uh, uh, C is uh, primarily looking at spatial practices and um, that space and form become the center through which we start questioning all aspects of society. Um, and in in that context, uh, again, this panel of three uh, studies, I think, are extremely uh, pertinent and required in today's context. In that, they question: Are we are we are we missing something when we are talking of how to design spaces or what to what kind of spaces to design, or maybe even are we missing? questioning building typologies as to what is a home, what is a public space in the current mediatized environment. Um, and in that, I'm, I'm, I'm quite fascinated by all the three topics that have been chosen. But at the same time, my uh, uh, hunch is that the whole idea of, of keeping space and form as the, the trigger, if not the center, through which to ask these questions is also equally important because eventually it is a, a architect an architecture school. Or in other words, I constantly ask myself a question as to if someone in a sociology department is doing exactly the same thesis, where will they approach it from? And as architecture students, where do you approach it from? And therefore the space and form in its largest uh, uh, sense of the word, could be the way of entering. Uh, so there I felt that probably what all the three studies would benefit from is a more rigorous questioning of whatever spatial uh, 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 aspects you're looking at. And let me give examples. Um, if I start with Aditya, for example, uh, uh, Aditya, um, he was talking of how over the last maybe seven, eight decades, or maybe a century, uh, technology has affected uh, the idea of home. Uh, but there I would tie back to what uh, Prasad was saying that uh, instead of just looking at technology as the device, if I start asking the question, what the technology is doing uh, to the meaning of home, that could be one route, right? What, what, what is a home? Uh, you use the word uh, uh, domesticity, notions of domesticity. How is it changing the meaning of domesticity could be one track. The other could be the actual uh, uh, physical integration of the appliance as purely as a provision in the sense that uh, space for washing machine, space for TV, or maybe if you're talking of uh, cable TV or landline, how does one provision for all the cabling wiring or questions of uh, plug points in, in, maybe in the last five, 10 years, how the number of requirements for number of plug points have increased or how 
people have started sitting closer to plug points uh, whereas maybe in earlier houses the location of plug points was determined more by some other logic the plug point was always clubbed with the fan or the light point uh, to make it more efficient but maybe that is not the 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 best place to locate it so one direction as an architect you can take is from a merely a provision perspective and how uh, people start sitting in the house in different ways because of how technology is governing it but the other is the meaning of home i think uh, uh, and if i were to give an example from kalpita study uh, uh, i mean you picked up one of them was about the cctv camera and uh, you know it, it, i i always wonder what would jane jacobs think of now when she, if she were to talk of ice on the street and all these cctv cameras as ice on the street and how the whole ice on the street has completely been subverted or transformed uh, in the new realm but also questioning okay what is a public space or what is the first what is the need for public place in the city what can the public place do in the city but then actually zooming into selecting some public spaces maybe in the city and asking the question uh, okay if if there were a different kind of ice on the street now and now there are cctv cameras um, how has how has the behavior in that public space changed okay or how are people behaving differently in that public space so i felt that maybe using using space as the trigger to ask these questions might lead you in in into making some uh, much more sharper observations than you're making today and otherwise i think the the uh, sort of uh, common story that everyone says is oh with this new mediatized environment everyone is in their own bubble and you have instagram and what not and people are not talking to each other uh, which i think as researchers one should really uh, uh, question further i'm i'm reminded of an interesting cartoon where the first frame is everyone in a uh, in a train looking at their phones busy on their phones and uh, the caption is what happened to society and the next frame is everyone in a london train looking at their own newspapers because that that was a very common thing that people used to do in the train that they would all open their newspapers which is actually just doing the same thing so from that perspective if i really start asking the question of the home and the public space or or what is personal or private or related to family and what is something that is related to society using architecture or space and form as the tool of inquiry i think it might serve you better is is the sense i got from the th three presentations uh um, yeah. shriyank can i yeah yes sir please so i'm in a sense uh, my comment is connected to both the other earlier speakers but for me what i found uh, very core uh, somewhere this idea of the mediated uh, space and the digital is at uh, and it was reflected in very different ways in all three of your presentations was this idea of surveillance uh, but you had different ways of tackling it and of course one can for me uh, i'm a kind of a new luddite uh, if you know what that means um when it comes to digital devices and surveillance and of course this seminar is called space in the era of the virus and the arogya setu app right the arogya setu app is something uh, that uh, haunts haunted me when it came and uh, even just for phone networks like i used to go for a walk downstairs i had to i used to switch off my uh, i used to put myself on airplane mode uh, so uh, what i found interesting is that you all have um so then there is the first uh, kalpita's thing is about the neighbors and surveillance um and cameras uh, but is the surveillance now any more even about the camera 
so i think there was so there is one level of surveillance studies which looks at uh, the the camera as central and then there is you know which is very foucauldian panopticon etc stuff and then uh, you know there is this study which um, is called the policing of families by donzel lot which is actually about neighbors and how uh, people start policing each other uh, somewhere i i feel that uh, it it would it would be interesting if you add that layer of the virus and its presence through surveillance whether it is through the state through an app through the neighbor through the disc social discrimination that happens uh, uh, in buildings in the beginning uh, the first people who are not allowed in uh, uh, who are they there's a there's lots of stuff going on and i think this is i mean i hate to be this uh, person who says it but the data on your work is heavy duty right now this is the time to get it together um and you know um, aditya your presentation was very very interesting for me because um i have recently done a ethnography of the house uh and uh, the the things that i wanted to bring up with connection to yours and to others is the notion of the public and the private uh you know the classroom the first thing you may you mentioned this thing about how you us uh, work at night in a separate room and the family sleeps outside now but the classroom is actually public but it is very private for the student because i you don't want to tell your parents what your what your faculty is actually saying to you i mean i don't know how many people experience this but there was a i was teaching a course on modern south asia and i was teaching suza who's a artist and suza does very interesting graphic grotesque nudes and i was like oh my god i am teaching kids who are sitting in side bed house ro houses drawing rooms dining rooms with their mothers walking around with tea and whatever and how the classroom uh, which is and going to the college experience which is public which is you can have totally entirely different lives and you do i mean i did when i was in college uh, at home and outside so this thing of the home collapsing um, the public and the private and somewhere the you know like we as the the public entering into a private space uh, is also something you can think about in unpacking the spatial inside the home and how I, you you have you must have seen some students carry their laptops around or their phones around during the class because there's like grandmother is suddenly saying something and you want to like a and one student actually once told me thank god i put you on mute uh, if my parents heard what you're saying <laughs> they would be so you know so there are these things um, which one has to rethink of the switches between public and private and how the digital and the body movement has all got affected by all this uh, also for uh, aditya what would be interesting is uh, um you know thinking of uh, um I, what's happening inside the house you know things like that like it doesn't go away uh you're literally sitting in the same room and you could be messaging each other or something so uh, what are the ways um, uh what are the forms of privacy that get developed uh or not or how the public enters the house and i mean um in uh, you you did a lot of visuals uh, which were very interesting uh, for me um but i feel like you need to unpack those a little bit more ethnographically mm. uh and tanvi yours was also very interesting for me especially for this idea of the public space uh and movement in the public space because uh, as i was saying um uh actually the public space for a young person is the private space you know uh where one of the things that students are constantly saying is like we're dying to get out of the house because we can't be ourselves right or the fact that you want to meet your beloveds or whoever you want to go to bandstand with or wherever you go um so this thing of uh, uh so in a sense i i liked your visuals i did, i think you did something very interesting uh with the different kind of locations uh but uh what are the tensions of the public and the private in the context of surveillance technologies you know uh 
uh, in the context of uh, the fact that there is arogya uh, setu um, uh, the fact that now you do not have an excuse to get out of the house uh, so what what so what are that what are the tensions that build around and how is then the public space actually is it actually public um how do you get to a place like you know students take trains but now uh i mean at least in delhi in the beginning the um, metro was shut and a lot of people their relationships collapsed lots of bizarre things have happened i'm sure young people will know so what is how do you weave in the so- sociological of the public private the uh the the techno technological uh, i don't know if you guys saw there was this map circulating in the early days of bombay with like corona red hot spots and stuff right so and i, I literally everybody's like refreshing the map like what is what is that doing like why why does everybody want to uh, what is the reassurance of the map um so and i think uh, somewhere i think all of you have gone uh, towards this but i really thing you need to a uh, little bit suck in that moment of the fact that this is this is this was an era of surveillance of digitized mediation of being and self so yeah that's my two bit thanks sir and thanks everyone uh, like just very quickly to maybe um, aditya kalpita and tanvi to maybe respond uh, do you guys want to add anything to that or i mean they were not questions i as such but i think they were more of uh, comments uh, from from all the panelists uh, but but one particular question that kind of uh, also got my attention was uh, vishwanath's uh, question about how does you know the the the, the, the mediatized uh, you know you know uh, world change the meaning of you know that particular kind of space that particular form or you know whether it's home public space or Uh, so like anybody want to kind of respond to that or oh uh, yeah i would like to say something that uh, uh i mean what i was trying to do was that i was trying to find that how uh, like sp- uh, specifically public space i was looking at public spaces so how public spaces have transformed due to mediatized environments basically so uh, what it led me to that led me to that uh, the importance of the space was diminished i mean by that i mean that uh, uh, the spatiality of space like for example uh, if if for, for example if my friend is posting a story of uh, she being at the beach and versus me being at the beach was uh, the if she is posting it with the sound and with the visuals uh, i would not actually required to be there so that is how uh, i was experiencing uh, the virtual space yeah yeah i think in, in that in that context i think sarovar's uh, comment about the renewed interest in the outside you know in the in between in the public space and, and you know the, the space where you can be yourself in this kind of a crowd uh, is also an interesting you know a uh, twist that, that that this particular condition has kind of you know uh, brought in uh, for all of us i think you know? um, this this is almost a in- reversal of where do you kind of located your privacy or your sense of privacy before uh, that's also interesting i think i think it is brought back that to our attention that we were where where exactly we were private you know most of the time putting on your headphones and walking down the street and singing in your head probably you know is is the moment where you are best closer to yourself and things like that aditya do you want to comment on that idea of how uh, perhaps the the introduction of all these um, electronic technologies kind of maybe have um, changed the meaning of home or yeah, you're on mute aditya no i was just thinking matlab how tanvi said ke like if i am able to you know uh, experience the same thing through a medium in like just being at home then but still like in current context like we still are rooting like, like schools to start and you know we want that studio space or that environment to happen so i was thinking ki like 
what is that which is you know wanting me to be there because as server said i can like let's say if i have a private room and i can have all the privacy in the world and to make myself comfortable but still the character which the studio space would allow and the home matlab those matlab wo afford nahi kar pa raha because of the uh, people they are like if someone is sharing me a joke i can I cannot like just shout and like abuse like how i would have maybe in the studio space so how different characters kind of get us crunched up in this really dark thing yeah uh, yeah. Rui, do you do you want to add something, sir? Or oh, Kalpit, you want to say something? Yeah, I saw you I, were on mute and then I. No, no, I, that, so I'm connected with two devices. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, the thing is that uh, I mean it's Prasad. not always about surveillance. Like right now, I think it's not always about the surveillance, but it's always about these what these technological hardwares are doing to yourself. Like how the first, like I mean I don't know whether I've mentioned it or not, but And the first uh, case study, which takes, uh, which is the hetero case of the frame, which looks at the, uh, which looks at the world through the frame. So how the, uh, how the clarification of a particular partiality, or uh, uh, it comes from these frame, like how these frame frames are becoming so momental for that moment that it gives a, a, a identity of to those place, like how they are making these pockets of themes. and these theme pockets have no connections to to their surroundings basically if you take a selfie point like a basic example so it has no connection to the surrounding and the purpose that it serves is the is for the frame is for the boundaries of a particular hardware and how does these things separate or explores the idea of a nuclear family or the idea of individual individualism because here you can make your persona personas however you want you can add on to anything you can delete anything that you can uh, you want a world to see and that is how it is getting perceived by people i mean that's just the thing yeah i, I think it's an interesting case uh, for tanvi also i mean that sounds like uh, there is a very clear you know uh, popping up of a particular kind of space you know for 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 a particular device or something like that you know uh rupali has something to add and then follow i i then i'll ask prasad and rohit wanted to say something i guess to kalpit quickly sorry i'm so sorry yeah um uh, kalpit you said when you take a selfie if it has nothing to do with space it does because you tag yourself on where you are and there is this whole idea of so surveillance which is self surveillance right? um sounds like good surveillance ah uh, that whole project so surveillance project you should look at it anyway sorry carry on Yeah, Rupali, you're you're mute. You're mute. You're mute. Yeah, now I'm not on mute, na. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I was I was also saying that um, I mean one thing, one interesting thing that this whole sort of panel brings out is this kind of uh, you know dismantling of the of structures of society. You know, the, as we know them, right? Like in Kalpita's case, is this kind of fictional story that she writes of this extreme situation where there is this kind of This typical uh, Goregao apartment has this family, which is you know where one is hiring the other and all of all kinds of things. And in in uh, in um, Aditya's case, the, the 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 complete sort of dismantling of how we understand a bedroom or a living room and all of that kind of gets completely thrown out of the window. Or in in Tanvi's case, this idea of you know how the public space is used and this whole idea of whether it's kind of you know private and public. so in some ways this dismantling of of sort of social structures and our categories of of you know known ideas of of separation and categorization in some is some ways something that we are you know is is out there for us whereas uh, categories of thinking of space you know whether it's in that typical uh, goregao apartment which is the you know what kalpita said the space for a nuclear family it's still being designed like that or you know the idea that this the space of the apartment that aditya is kind of talking about is still being designed through these older categories or in tanvi's case also um you know and so in some ways this dismantling of categories is interesting for us to think about um and and in 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 this the whole, i mean all three panels kind of point towards that you know so how do we kind of rethink those those categories uh might be interesting for us to think through I uh, I I just yeah sorry but I just sure. wanted to add on to that Rupali I that is where I feel that uh, a sharper sort of uh, 
study of what is a public space to begin with. Um, because I think when architects talk about private and public space, they usually say that the house or the inside the building is private. And I see so many students who will talk of semi-open space as semi-public or semi-private and then open space is public. But uh, um, if I if I look at what is the purpose vis-a-vis -vis social structures, a lot of times you go outside your house to be in a public space because you want respite from the house or you're looking for anon anonymity. At the same time, you might also go to public space because you want to engage with other people, which is in some senses di diametrically opposite to desiring anonymity and being on your own and not being disturbed by everyone else. So. I was what I found fascinating is that if I start looking at what is the purpose of public space and in that context, look at what the digitized environment is doing to these, where do I, where do I seek anonymity? Uh, where do I seek group approval or being in a group? It might actually allow us to ask this question in a much more open-minded uh, uh, way. Uh, rather than thinking of just as inside the building, outside the building, kind of uh, opposites. Yeah. So um, I want to kind of you know continue with what Prasad had, uh, started to say the, the the whole technological move. No, I mean, and I want to distinguish here because you know uh, water supply and plumbing, which kind of you know which became the uh, first. I mean, second set technological revolution, so to say, one was earlier putting the building together and distinguish that from the ele electricals and distinguish that from electronics, distinguish that from the new media. You know, what, what is happening is the index of magic is increasing. You know, you saw the shit move and you saw the water supply move. You know, you didn't see the electrons move. You 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 switch the button and then the light came, you know the the fan, moved. and then you know you could pick up a phone and talk to somebody far away. Your your agency in handling that uh, conduit between you and somebody else kind of you know disappeared, and then now with a phone you know you're completely detached from the mechanics of it. So what's happening, the magic quotient kind of, you know, keeps on increasing. And the physicality of the physicality, which kind of, you know, shaped the sociality and the mind, you know, the physicality, which shaped the sociality and mind in terms of either infrastructure or, or public space, etc. that kind of started eroding, you know, so, so all, all three of them were kind of you know, making that mean that you know, arc in which you know the physicality kind of starts eroding, and you have something which you do not have control over. You have something which is which appears to be magical, but you're kind of you know making those connections. You're making those. They are expanding, compressing your senses, altering your senses. You can zoom, for example, you can see and you can zoom. Your eye has increased suddenly capacity. You can talk. Your ear, your ear capacity has increased. So your, it's altering capacities. It's altering senses. It's kind of you know eroding physicality. Now, and it has explicit implication on the sense of space. You know, so 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 and so because because space. You know, if we were to assume that sp space kind of expresses itself through our senses, then you know through its physicality and senses, then with the erosion of physicality and with the kind of altering of sense, what is the notion of, and, and what are the, what are the coordinates of space? So I think, I think that, and, and, and of course technology and the new media kind of, you know, provides many moments of emancipation, you know, inside, outside, all of those things. So, but the, the, the struggle has been with, I think the three of them has been again, the question of language, because, because to talk of this, magic the erosion of physicality and the kind of something which they are unable to handle you know which is the, the because the, because the language is kind of you know coding and hacking the language is also looks so distanced from what happens as a as a as an experience of it so so how does how does for architects for for people who are dealing with space 
when the physicality is at uh, is under attack you know and the senses the receptors are also getting altered and then they have they have a, they have no language to kind of you know engage with it then what is the starting point for them you know, where does where do they kind of you know start handling and, and and are they are they becoming irrelevant so to say you know in in this whole game of uh, uh, erosion of physicality and you know I, i'm talking of in extreme terms but I, i think i think i think the irrelevance is kind of you know is is, is a different feeling altogether and then i'm talking in in those and i think the 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 three of them kind of you know are are dealing with it and kind of you know dealing with it very experientially as to kind of you know seeing the moments of you know how person moves through how to kind of you know navigate through what do you do when only the application end it as is in your hands you know you don't you don't have anything else in your hand so i think i think that struggle is something which they are dealing with actually yeah yeah okay yeah sure sure no unless someone else wants to put it no 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 go ahead go ahead. Uh, no i mean I, i wasn't saying that i mean i understand the different kinds of uh, technology no, i was saying that uh, uh, like you know uh, maybe a way to see it is to think about the computational algorithms you know i mean kind of like the term of the space calculator right like how do you think about uh, say uh, how is the algorithms of space right shifting with uh it's not i don't necessarily think it's dismantling uh or it's kind of you know getting erased i think it's changing you know all this kind of uh, shifting uh but you know uh, what i was you know i was able to get it in the sense of the apartment space right like where the spatial algorithms of a family starts moving that right? this is, i mean algorithms in the sense of the procedures and calculations of what space is they start shifting with certain coming in of technology right now uh, in uh, and i think that that is uh, the spatial algorithms are also the social algorithms right like you know of gender and class and you know families and those kinds of things so where do these technologies uh, Uh, kind of interact with each other right uh, both in terms of and it's something that is interesting is that there's a difference between the hardware and the software right the hardware is like you're saying you know there's, there's physicality to the hardware right like you know the plug and there's a pipe and there's so you, but there's also the software which is what the what, uh, you know earlier we could call it power but now it's sort of a shift in uh so uh, you know to uh, look at to have a framework of understanding technology itself right and then thinking about architecture might also be an interesting way to approach it you know like in the earlier panel we were thinking about sense of species and how do you kind of use that as a framework to think right here it is the struggle because what technology is is kind of uh it requires a little more investigation to also understand what you know social technologies how are they interacting right uh, like what are the how does the uh, co- computational algorithm start shifting social algorithms which is that is what it essentially is trying to do or spatial algorithms in some ways you know and which are not necessarily driven by just technology but it's a sort of a interaction right uh, that is what you know if one can such map that is something that i was thinking about i had one uh, short response to what prasad was saying it's kind of triggered by what he was saying you know um about this thing of is there a loss of something is it the loss of the magic and um, or tactility or the fact that you get i mean what would be actually also interesting and, and i don't know if, students these days are interested in such things is to think about things like sexuality loneliness and love uh in the frame of this digital public private surveillance yeah, and the uh, time of the virus because uh, uh then there are people who actually 
uh, get in have got into relationships or will get into relationships only because it's digital and this is that generation because there is i mean i i hope some students this is making sense to them um, we are kind of old school analog love story people but uh, <clears throat> i think these are these are very interesting points of uh, unpacking uh the virtual the magic the the non meeting and yet uh, manifesting something I, 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 students get very shy when i bring up such things but um i think it's a very interesting tum shy ho rahe ho are main kyun shy hongi mera to tum bhi kyun bolte ho shy ho rahe ho but no because i find it very strange that they don't talk about it in a thing like this right so, yeah so this is one thing i would want to put on the table thanks thanks sir ashwin you wanted to add something um there was a scene in uh, better call saul uh, i know i don't know if everyone has seen the, the web series but it talks about how matlab uh, so basically they are actually capturing a set of workers in a uh, in a warehouse and they are supposed to be in there for 6 months or something the point is that uh, when uh, the person mike plans the entire warehouse he starts uh, he, he specifically instructs them to put the cctvs up so that nobody uh, they don't feel surveilled so my question to sarovar is uh, when she was talking about um, Uh, data and uh, uh, surveillance through uh, this uh, through the data do we experience uh, a sur- a surveillance and power through that matlab is it experienced or is it something that the fact that it exists somewhere i Haan, think it, it is a ghost i think i i think um, uh, partly this idea of invisible surveillance is something that Mm, you know that you don't know that it's going on but you know with the app like the arogya setu app and the stories that came out of it and how it would access your uh, you know it could take videos of hours of you or if you went up, uh, airtel could send you a message saying that you have gone outside 2 kilometers of your house this is i'm talking about the peak uh, lockdown in at least in delhi we um where you so then of course you're experiencing it uh and your experience uh, it's not invisible it's very present uh it's uh, i mean it's it's digitized and it's shown to you that this is what you're doing uh and it has a certain immediacy to it so i think that i think the panopticon has uh kind of shattered into itself into the digital technology which you carry on yourself so this whole project of susvelens that i was mentioning to kalpita uh, was a project done by an artist where he was uh, after 911 he was constantly picked up he had a muslim name and he was constantly picked up in airports across america and the world so what he did was he started taking pictures of himself um and putting them on a website so every single minute of his uh life was uh, was on a website like he was this is a time when this whole live streaming and all these things are slightly different this is maybe uh, 10 years ago you know he did this pro- uh, project and his point was that um i feel surveilled all the time uh and i think uh, i think the panopticon has never been invisible it just depends on how paranoid you are <laughs> and how you i don't know maybe somebody else can add to this question answer <laughs> so i i yeah i had a thought that i i was wondering whether all it's also leading us to question whether this sort of categorization of private and public space itself uh, uh, should be studied further 
because I sense that there are two kinds of things we are talking of. One is wanting to be alone versus wanting to be with people or uh, uh, wanting to interact with people. That That is one sort of thing. And the other of uh, the other is about whether I'm being observed or not. Spaces where I don't want to be observed and spaces where I don't mind being observed. So in that sense, I'm putting up a mask if I'm pretentious. Um, and that historically, these two are collapsed into the categorization of private and public. But I think what uh, uh, the if I look at technology, it is all about uh, the fact that the technology allowed the sensory organs to be activated beyond the limit of sensory organs. As in, I can see someone in Mumbai right away. And then the second step is someone in Mumbai can hear me real time. Then someone can see me, hear me, but I can also hold a conversation real time. So technology is constantly changing the limits of the sensory organs. And so to me that and also this question of what is private and what is public and what is a home and what is a public space. Uh, I think these, to me, these three studies are are getting there. They are trying to question, you know, what do we call a public space anymore? If if I'm, if I take a photograph, or right now when you can see the, my bedroom, isn't that a public space? Uh, and therefore, as architects, when we talk about public and private, how do we talk about it? Yeah. Uh, Rohit, you had a point to, point to add. Uh, you're on mute. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking this through and Tanvi's conclusion rings in my ears. The point that she made uh, that with, with, with new media, we think in terms of pixels. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of uh, connecting her work to the other two, but also, also the panel in the morning. Um, if both these panels are, uh, are, you know, if we don't take the surveillance tag, but if we take another tag, that these panels are about reflecting on the self, the one through the species and the other one through technology. And what seemed to be, what, I mean, Tanvi's point brought me to this, that when she talks about pixels, and then you start looking at Devarsh's drawings, and you start looking at, uh, Vaishnavi's drawings or um, Ptolemy's drawings. Uh, when they're speaking of kind of working with the senses that are not visual and uh, Tanvi is kind of pointing to, we see things, simul we, we kind of experience things simultaneously in the new media context. And if Aditya were to do those drawings, similar drawings of the experience across different forms of technology, then probably, I mean, we experienced things simultaneously and the visual was not really, visual was not really the primacy, which architects only think in terms of design, but in terms of experience, the visual is not, I mean, there's no primacy to the visual. That's, is that what is happening? I mean, this, this, I mean, it's a, com it's, it's a question that kind of uh, comes to my head. Thanks, Dr. Sadi, you want to add uh, something? No, I'm just kind of, you know, reinstating my point and kind of, you know, going back to what this was and the, the, the thing is the, the, the tenets of, the tenets of uh, space, no, which is basically the physicality and the experience of it. Now, both of them are under reconfiguration. And architects somehow do not have a way to engage with it. There is no language. You know, and that is a crisis at the moment. You know, the technological crisis posed to architects, that is, a, that is, that is really the crisis. You know, you, you use technology to kind of, you know, create, you know, you use, you, you know how architects use technology. They, they use it in a very, very shabby and, uh, you know, fallacyful way, actually. The thing is that we, there, 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 there is a slippage and, and that, that crisis is something which I think we need, we need deeper uh, investigation. That's, that's all. Thanks. Uh, we are almost uh, at the end 
if i'm not wrong you know of the this i mean time time wise of this panel discussion i think very interesting points that came um, came up in this uh, discussion very interesting questions also um and i'll just quickly kind of uh, tick mark and highlight all the points that came so prasad uh, khanulkar started with you know kind of uh, requesting and urging you guys to kind of look at technology as a kind of a broader uh, idea and not just look at technology as something new and something uh, which is electronic or digital or etc etc vishwanath uh, was asking you guys to kind of you know uh, consider how does the kind of shift in technology change the meaning of uh, you know the particular kind of space or or the form that you're investigating um sarovar pointed out that there is a shift in the idea of surveillance from uh from this from panopticon to what she's calling as sous surveillance or, or or even catopticon one may call it in another term um and prasad uh pointed out that with the shifts in these technologies you know the the what he's saying the tenets of 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 what configure space and form today is also changing i think our our reception and our experience of that is uh changing constantly and rohit is saying that um all these thesis kind of you know uh, trying to bring forward a kind of a uh, the, uh bring forward an idea that 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 visuality is no longer the kind of you know primary way in which we experience of course we have never experienced uh, uh the world only through visual this thing but there was a primacy of visual uh you know sense uh, so far and there's a kind of you know need to dismantle that and kind of see how does one kind of read space and form through that thing i just wanted to add three quick pointers to to all these comments um uh, one is uh, to kind of link back to what prasad was saying about the idea of technology in heidegger uh in his famous tool analysis uh, heidegger kind of in you know, a points out that in most experience of the uh, in most of the experience of the world we don't actually pay attention to things you know uh, things are in the background uh, and that's perhaps an interesting a uh, starting point and it remind reminded me of one of the lectures that prasad himself gave um, uh, i think last year or two years back on the idea of portal of how things become portal to something else like you're talking about that cinema in in the i don't, I don't remember which uh, settlement uh, but there's this idea of the cinema which kind of becomes a portal to something else so in that sense i think if you look at technology in the broader sense one can also look at it as a portal for something else uh the third point is that uh the kind of drawings you guys were making were also interesting because you're not saying that technology illuminates everything or touches everything or you know kind of finds relationship with everything but but you highlight specific things you know so in that sense a uh, certain kind of technology kind of has this capacity to highlight only some things and not everything around you so how does that those some things get reconfigured because of that technology and i think that disconnectedness because of the technology is also an interesting kind of way to uh, you know the side of detachment uh, is interesting and i was wondering maybe is it is it one of the reasons why um, th- there is a fallacy in terms of kind of you know thinking that every time technology changes the architecture that follows should change with it i think there is there is a certain interesting disconnect between the experience of the two or the influence of one over the other or the perception and the exercising of one over the other in an interesting way i mean toilet is a very good example for that it changed uh, at one point but it has remained constant for a very very long time even though there are many new toilet seats that are you know coming up every day um well anyways uh, fantastic panel discussion um thanks everyone i think we'll break for lunch and uh, we'll kind of meet at 2:30 um so thank you everyone and see you all in the second session uh, for third panel bye thank you thank you Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.